Hi guys, today we are going to just look at completing the square and partial factoring to find the vertex. These are two different methods, um, basically to get to the same point. Um, okay, so let's start with completing the square. The first step to completing the square is to just bracket up these first two terms here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the a value, which is always in front of your x squared, and we're going to common factor it out from both terms inside of the bracket. Okay, we're not common factoring the x's. Our goal is to have this x squared by itself at the end of this. So that's my cat. This is what we get. Okay, now off to the side, you're going to do a little calculation. Um, you're basically going to take the number in front of your new x term and you are going to divide it by 2 and square it. So we'll get 4 squared, which is 16. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to add it and subtract it inside the bracket right after the 8x there. Okay, so plus 16 minus 16 and the 7 is just going to kind of hang out there for a little while. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we are going to take out the negative term and remember that this 2 is being multiplied by everything inside this bracket. So we're going to multiply it by 2 as we take it out. Okay, so we're going to get negative 32 plus 7. Okay, we don't switch a sign of that um, because we're not bringing it to the opposite side of the equal sign. We're just taking it out of a bracket. So it's still on the same side, meaning it still has the same sign. Okay, I'm going to do two things in this last step. I'm just going to gather up the uh, negative 32 and the positive 7, and I'll get negative 25. And I'm going to factor this perfect square trinomial inside the brackets that we just created here. Okay, so we can think about this a couple different ways. Uh, we can think about this as just factoring a regular quadratic. So what two things multiply to 16 and add to 8? Uh, those two numbers would be 4 and 4. And then we'd end up with two brackets that are x plus 4 and x plus 4. Okay, that's always going to be the case when we factor a perfect square trinomial, so I know that we're going to have a squared here. Okay, um, so the other way to do this, which is kind of like a little cheat, is just copy down whatever term is in the middle of your quadratic, and then square root the first and square root the last, so x plus 4. Okay, and now we basically have our vertex. at negative 4, negative 25. Okay, remember to switch the sign of this guy right inside the brackets there. Okay, let's move on to partial factoring. Partial factoring basically uh, is a method where we find the axis of symmetry and then we find the y value of the vertex. And we know the axis of symmetry is the same as the x coordinate of the vertex. And what's nice about this is that we actually get to ignore the c value for a little while because it does not affect our axis of symmetry. Only the a and b values do. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just start by rewriting this equation without the c value. Okay, and then I'm going to sub in 0 for y. Okay, we're basically kind of like solving for our x's right now. And when I try to solve, I'm going to fully common factor, okay? Not just the a value this time, but like the whole values here. Okay, so I'm seeing a common 2 and a common x. I'm take that out, I'll be left with x plus 8. Okay, now we're going to go and we're going to try and solve this expression. So either 2x is equal to 0, or x plus 8 is equal to 0. And for this to be true, x must be equal to 0, or negative 8. Okay, what we've just found are two x's on the either side of the axis of symmetry. Okay, they're perfectly balanced on either side of those axis of symmetry. So if I know two x's on the either side of axis of symmetry that are equal distances apart, I can average them out and get the center of that. So to get my axis of symmetry, I'm going to average them by adding them together. And when I average two values, I have to divide them by two. Okay, so we get negative 4. This is the x-coordinate of our vertex, as we just saw in the last example. Okay, um, don't switch the sign of this. We already have the sign. Um, and all we need to do at this point is plug it back into the original equation to get our y-value. Okay, so... Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so we're plugging back in to get the y-coordinate. So 2 times negative 4 squared plus 16 times negative 4 plus 7. Okay, so 2 times 16 will give us 32. And 16 times negative 4 gives us negative 64 
plus 7. And we're left with negative 25. All right, so there we go. We just found the y-coordinate of the vertex. So our full vertex is this x-coordinate and this y-coordinate here. So negative 4, negative 25. And that's great because that's what we got in the first example so that we know this answer is correct. Okay, there you go.